I think Apple just kicked down the entire door uh, on all of these other competitors. We talk about like Google is their competitor or Sam, who is their competitor? And I think they just kicked down the door and sh and showed that they are the big dog in everything. And that it all hinges on the Epic versus Apple antitrust case that started back in 2020 uh, and essentially like going all the way through and trying to make a really, really long story short. That's fascinating. Fortnite, the game that all of Nate and I students were playing all the time. Kids could spend their parents' money to get their character like a really cool dance or spend their parents' money to get their character a cool outfit. And by doing that, 30% of every dollar that was spent on Fortnite went to Apple because you had to use the App Store. So Fortnite was like, and Epic Games, who's the owner of Fortnite, was like, Psh, hey, those are our things. We made all of it. Apple, why are you taking any of it? So what they wanted to do was they sued Apple and were like, we should be able to have our own payment that has nothing to do with you. So in 2020, right before COVID hit, that, that case went to the lower court. The lower court said Apple is not being a monopoly. They made the iPhone. They made this entire ecosystem. They can continue to charge 30%. But what they have to do is they, they gave an injunction, which is basically like you have to do this. And that injunction said that somewhere in the app, Apple had to link to an external uh, payment site that people could go to. And so uh, Epic wasn't happy with this and was like, well, we know like we know Amazon spends like crap ton of money to be like the fastest thing to click buy. And every time you click click somewhere else, you're less likely to buy. So for a kid to be playing Fortnite, oh, I really want to buy this new shirt. And oh, I can click this link and it'll take me there. We, they're going to do it less. And so they weren't happy with this. So they uh, tried to file it with the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court was like, no. We're not, we're going to stand with that original case. We, Apple's not a monopoly. They're not violating anything. They're going to stand with that. Plus Epic had to pay for all of Apple's legal fees. So they're paying Apple $73 million, but it goes one step, like even further crazier. Um, have you heard about like the stuff that's happening with the, the Dutch dating app? Nate, are you on a Dutch dating app? No, never. Okay. That. I'm glad uh, I live in like West Michigan and there's a lot of Dutch people. So, but I'm talking about like there were basically, I think it was like, like Tinder or something like that in the Netherlands. They yeah. had, uh, they um, sued Apple for the same exact reason, just like Epic game did. But um, what Apple decided to do was say, okay, we will link to an external site uh, and allow you to pay on an external site, just like Epic games did with Fortnite. But we are going to take 27% of any purchases made off of your external site for any links clicked within seven days. And that held in the Netherlands court. And so now if you buy in-app on this Dutch dating site through the Apple App Store, it's 30%. If you click their link and go to the Netherlands site, they have to build on an Apple API and it drops it by 3%. Wow. And so my big, my big takeaway from that is like, Apple is the kingpin here. And you can be like, oh, look, Samsung got to the faster, this RAM upgrade faster, or like, look, their cameras are a little better. But Apple has this legal thing so locked down. And there are a lot of analysts who are thinking that what Apple is going to do is bring that 27% revenue share to external sites here. So imagine like um, if, if that were to happen, that they're getting 27% of revenue that you get uh, yeah, I think of audible.com. Like if you go, if you download the audible app on your phone, it'll have a little link and say, Hey, go to amazon.com, sign up for an audible account and then log back in on this app. And Apple sees none of that, but because they tested it in the Netherlands and found that they can in that ecosystem, get the full 27%. Um, there are a lot of people who think that could happen here too. And it's just like, absolutely crazy and it just shows like they are the absolute big dogs in the space man so uh have you been keeping up with any of that stuff or is that just like i taught american government so i like nerd out on it oh i've been keeping up with it um i think the side loading stuff is really interesting in general like anything that gets added to your phone from a third party store or marketplace of some kind that apple still gets a cut from 
Um, I know that like the, the majority of the articles are incredibly negative, like facing toward Apple at least. So as a fanboy, like it all looks like pretty negative toward my favorite company, but, um, I don't feel that way at all. I'm, I'm going to agree with your take on Apple is the kingpin, uh, from a slightly different perspective, but just from the perspective of shrewd, smart business people. Yes. Um, cause Apple's point of view coming to this argument, understand like it's easy to write an article and be like, Oh yeah, Apple, they're so money hungry, yada, yada, yada. It's like, well, no, like Apple designed the ecosystem that everybody bought. So Apple is, did, they did the innovative thing, right? Mm -hmm. So for you to come in and be like, Hey, you know, you can't take that much, that much money from that, that percentage or whatever, however you want to make the argument, you're more than welcome to try and make that argument. And you're more than welcome to take Apple to court and, and work that out. But at the end of the day, like, I don't look at Apple and think, oh, they're just money hungry, whatever. Firstly, every publicly traded company on the on the planet, mm -hmm. every publicly traded company um, cares about the bottom line. That's what happens when you become a publicly traded company. But you don't get to $3 trillion company um, at one point, biggest company in the world in market cap, now second biggest company in the world by market cap, uh, but right up there with Microsoft. You don't get there by not being a smart businessman, you know, like they're doing a good job, I think, protecting their IP, protecting their genius, protecting their hardware. And if that's your bad, if you des so desperately want to be on their platform that you uh, feel like you're hard done by, the Spotify CEO has been outside his mind going crazy about Apple and saying all sorts of bad stuff about them. And that's fine. I think Apple can, can handle a lot of that negativity. Um, because I think they have the hardware people want, they have the user interface people dream about, like everybody else's user interface, in my opinion, has been more shaped by Apple than Apple has been shaped by them. And then, um, on top of that, they have this really great brand around privacy and security, Good. and they're willing to take, uh, to have like, in some cases, less functional equipment, right? If you want to go down to specs or things like that. Yeah but for the works. purpose of having that privacy. And if you're going to have like, I don't know about you, but like I was listening to uh, uh, the fan of Broncos uh, uh, radio station in Denver um, year, uh, about a year ago, maybe. And I was listening to a former Broncos player talk about how he moved on from having a wallet because in the state of Colorado, you can have your driver's license on your phone in your Apple wallet. And now I don't carry a wallet ever. I have one credit card on my phone at all times so that if my phone doesn't work and my Apple pay doesn't work, I have a backup plan. Um, but like, I don't carry my driver's license anywhere and it's awesome. I love it. So if I didn't have confidence as a consumer in my company being, uh, you know, being safe to have that kind of information, that would be problematic. Right. So Dude, that brand goes a long way. It, yes. Th that's ex And I often have been worried cause they're my favorite company. You know, I have the Steve jobs head too. And I've been worried, like, how are you going to compete against Huawei who just steals your stuff and does this? How are you going to compete against all these people who just like steal your innovation and then build on it and don't care about privacy? And there've been a lot of very smart tech writers who are like, Apple will never compete when they are not selling your data because like, that's a cash cow. So I love, like, I know like the underdog lover in me wants Apple to lose because they're like, the man but in this case like this is how they can win long term is that this is their ip man like you're exactly right and to your case about spotify that um what has spotify brought that's original it's it's a itunes knockoff like they haven't advanced <laughs> the space with podcasting they haven't advanced the space with they're essentially just an itunes knockoff and and until they in, uh, innovate and take it to the next level and do something that you don't have an Apple Music and Apple Podcast, then then why shouldn't they be paying the thirty percent or twenty seven percent to Apple? Um, I I don't know if you're using the iPhone as the vehicle to deliver your product, there is a cost yep. associated with that, and yeah, I'm all for it, man.